Oh shit, here we go again. Here we go again lads, how are you doing fellow Terrarians? This time we are starting a brand new adventure on Master Mode with Revengeance enabled and the class that I'll go for is the Summoner class but with a twist. I am going for pure Summoner and that would mean that I will not be allowed to use whips or any classless weapons. This adventure starts with me seeing the awakening item that I have and what the fuck is this? Obviously not gonna read all of this cause we got an adventure waiting for us and I cannot wait. So yeah, here we are chopping down some trees and then exploring the world and noticing the pumpkins on the ground. When this was recorded it was the Halloween season so yeah we got pumpkins in the world. As I kept on exploring I found a corruption bomb and wanted to get past it but of course such things had to happen and whew, that was lucky. Okay we're going to the left side. At the entrance we find our first chest and it has the umbrella which is yeah just a regular umbrella you know. As I got deeper I have noticed some boulders next to each other so that meant it was a dead man's chest nearby and it turns out that I was right but before I would open it I would have to get rid of the traps. The cloud in a bottle, a great beginning to be honest. Again I went even deeper and found myself mining some gold in a mushroom biome as well as a golden chest which had a maze which was totally useless. As I dug down, a bat came out of nowhere and caused all of this to happen, while a totally clueless phantasm didn't know how to react fast. This is actually how this adventure starts. Well, I returned to the spawn point and started working on the wooden cells for the NPCs. Some wall here and here and there it is, the fantastic starter base 9000. As the moon rose, the night started and instead of going back to mining, I decided that it would be a great time to explore the right side of the world. Fortunately, I had a double jump and a feather fall potion so that was great. In one minute or less I got past the corruption bomb and ended up in this failed cave entrance while waiting for the squirrel to actually do something. Next up I had to look for shiver thorns since 5 of them were needed in order to craft the frost blossom stuff. A bit later I also found a not so cozy builder house which had some money in different forms. Unfortunately I have reached the end of the snow biome and I only had 3 shiver thorns so yeah I guess I'll just check the caves and look at these two chests being next to each other and having useful loot. I decided to drink a spelunker potion and I have noticed the very first first life crystal that I was about to use in this run. As I kept on exploring I found this open space right here but these bats kept on playing catch with me so I decided to recall since it was better than dying. Back at the base I collected some more pumpkins in order to craft the pumpkin armor set. Pumpkin man. And then I went back to the mushroom cave. Oh my spelunking buff just ended. It was the Halloween season so I got a goodie bag. This is definitely my type. Oh my fucking god. I kept on going deeper and deeper and found the locals from these caverns. One such example would be that green jelly fish which dropped the vital jelly, an amazing accessory for this stage. I had to dig while being stalked by this little shit but I eventually collected it and it had a good modifier too. I kept on finding more chests but to my surprise I kept on finding maces only. At least I got to find one more life crystal, then another one. Dude what the fuck? Then got the cleansing jelly which was kinda needed. Yo it's Sans Undertale and there is another chest. Fuck! Yeah, this game wants me to play with flares. Spoilers for the next movie, I guess. Anyways, here are more life crystals along with Alfredo, which forgot where it should stay. Far from me, I suppose. Yo, it sends again and he still doesn't sell useful stuff. I have reached the snow cavern again and got some ice skates, then another life crystal and another blizzard in a bottle. Yeah, about time I got back on the surface to explore more parts of this wonderful world, including this. I also drank a gravitation potion and ended up in the Drayden base, then I checked the surroundings and found a lucky horseshoe after crafting one, a planetoid with an enchanted sword and a floating lake. As I got down I have reached another corruption biome which had the effigy for me and a corruption key which was kinda useless you know. Then I also went down and smashed one shadow orb. Since I got more plants from the central planetoid I was finally able to craft the frost blossom stuff which summoned a nice flower above my head. My next task was to build some more houses, the current one being in the desert and as I was doing that this warning popped up meaning that I will get to witness my first death from a boss. Well I could have anything about it, you can tell the fact that I gave zero fucks about that message. Then I was like bro you know what, I have a frozen flower and a squirrel to help so let's try to do it, wouldn't you do the same? Anyways, the fun part is that this is the actual boss fight so enjoy, I will speed up this since it will take an eternity.
All right, what the actual fuck was that? That was kind of fun, not going to lie. Since I was in the desert, I decided to check the caverns and kill some storm lions to ask for the tender zapper, but for the storm just off, which will be great for the next boss. What the fuck is this wolf from shit? Yeah, I will craft the gold watch instead, as well as the sun spirit stuff, and then summon the chunky slime that claims to be a king, not knowing that I am the actual king of this world. Yeah, that was fairly easy and yo, it's a slime staff, that's so rare. Never mind, this game likes to fuck with my mind, you can actually craft the slime staff now. Well, the next activity was to fish in the jungle for some variegated large fish, then craft some summoning potions with them since those give one more minion slot. Then start placing some platforms in the desert since the next boss that I will fight against is the desert scourge. Well, here goes another successful fight, but unfortunately I didn't get what I wanted from it, so here goes another fight, but without any success. Well, at least I got to craft the Victide armor set, which I didn't wear in a long while. Then I went back to the desert to fight the Desert Scourge again and finally got the Seabound stuff. You can probably see why I really wanted it. Now, it's time to play some more platforms conveniently, so I will not fall in any of these corruption holes. Then add another row of platforms and the final one, as well as some torches and campfires so it looks cool. Here's the thing, I wanted the new summon weapon and I saw one on the wiki but it's the first time when I'm looking for it and you can tell that just by taking a peek on my minimap. I almost died at some point but managed to escape then I finally found one chest, looted it and made the last second escape. The chest had a rusty beacon prototype which looks like this and behaves like a sentry which is so fortunate. Now we got some more houses to build, chunky slimes to kill, oh he gave the seven. And check the inventory to see that I have some more goodie bags. Creeper. Oh man! I guess I will wear this for the rest of the game, if you don't mind me. Now it's time for yet another boss fight and I already saw something fucked up. Um, why does the boss spawn with more HP than it should have? However, this is still fine, so here we go. You see, that was a great fight, now we are making our way down to the underworld and of course I had to get stuck in here while waiting for the lava lake to drain. Well, finally, here I am, getting my hands on a lot of hellstone, as well as traveling 5 years in order to chop down only one ash tree. It's time for a proper upgrade, look at that burning hotbar. The adventure continues in the mushroom biome and this time we are defeating Krabalon, so enjoy! Wait, where the fuck is he? Oh, there he is!
Preblon defeated means we get the first rage upgrade. Now where do we go? It's time to check a more calming place, that being the sunken sea, and even this encounter was calming since all I did was to switch places from time to time. But that was not it, I still had to do something in here and that would be to get the voltaic jelly and then go home. Where do we go again? It would be the shimmer this time since I have to get some permanent upgrades such as the vital crystal, ambrosia, arcane crystal and also build some houses in here. What was really fun was the fact that I got the painter to sell the jungle pilot in here so this is how I can easily get in here. Oh boy, here I am again doing one of the most boring activities besides dancing on a platform but in the end I was able to summon the goblin army and what? Yeah, if you wanted to know how hard this invasion was, well, I moved around 5 blocks during the entire invasion. Other than that, my slaves, uh, <coughs> I mean my minions did all the great job. I was walking in the corruption when I decided that, you know what, I should defeat the hive mind as well so here we go. Good, now the sky glitters with cyan light, so that means we got a new ore. I wanted to get to that floating island in style, but I ended up doing this thing and yeah, I will let you enjoy. Fair. I drank a gravitation potion and ended up in here and look at all this shiny ore. Now, I wanted to craft some shiny red balloons and for that I needed a solidifier, so guess who we taking down for one more time. Alright, here we have three balloons, but we are not done yet. We might have every accessory needed for the bundle of balloons, but we are still missing probably the most essential item in the crafting tree. In order to get that item, I went to the underground jungle, found another maze, then woke up the drone guy. While I was doing my work in here, the goblin tinkerer spawned as well, so it's about time we get the workshop and upgrade our accessories. Now back to working on a brand new arena. The next boss that I am taking on is definitely the Queen Bee, and I will not commentate during that either, so enjoy. This fight is a must in every summoner's run and I will have to do it again since I need more bee wax. Funnily enough, when I summoned the queen bee again, 5 seconds have passed and yet another bee spawned. Obviously there was no way I was doing this, so I died and then came back for the revenge and had success. After that, I was finally able to craft the bee armor set, which is the best pre-armored summoner set. Then, for the first time in this run, I got to upgrade the boots, starting from Hermes and getting to Frostpark boots. Now look at this new and refreshing loadout. Now we have more houses to build, more trees to chop, more torches to be placed on rows of platforms that are here because we're fighting Skeletron next. Thanks lads, so enjoy this as well.
Skeletron being defeated means that I get access to a new POI, that being the dungeon. In case you don't know what a POI is, please consider subscribing. In case you do, consider subscribing as well. Anyways, a POI is a point of interest, and a dungeon in this case really is. Firstly, because of the stuff of Necros Theocytes, and secondly, and the most important reason, uh, I forgot. Back at the spawn, I was terraforming a little and was bored already, so I wanted to do something that might spice up things a little. So how about I go to the Sulfuros beach and have a good time with the super friendly locals that really want to hug me mid-air. In a few minutes the rain ended, meaning that the tier 1 acid rain event has been completed and yeah, that was it, nothing special. While I was getting acid on my face, I remembered the second reason why I wanted to visit the dungeon, and that was because I needed the bewitched table, which gives one more minion slot to use. Now, wanna do some more side quests? How about the old one's army? It was my army versus the old one's army, and you could tell who was going to win this. This didn't really take a lot of time and was really easy. I did it a few more times since I wanted 25 defender medals for later. Now, there was one more boss that would have to be defeated before taking on the wall of flesh, that being the slime god, which trust me, I will defeat without any trouble at all. God damn it, fuck this boss already! As the slime god was slowly turning into the queen slime, that's what I've seen somewhere, I knew that I was getting closer and closer to the mid game. I got the cream slime stuff and I really wanted to test it, and there's me bullying the chunkers again and getting the kill. Later that day, I crafted the static refiner as well as the jelly charge battery, which was the first important summoner accessory to be acquired. Then I also crafted the slime puppet staff and I'ma be real with you. This shit is probably the best summon item in the game, at least for the class that I am playing while not using whips. I had to get some more jungle materials, then I was finally able to craft the belladonna spirit stuff and finally the eye of the night which was a new summoner weapon for me, I mean, it's not bad at all. Yeah, it's that time of the run, lads, the time where I start working on the underworld bridge, which I definitely not hate making. I was surprised by the fact that the Draydon Bay spawned on the left side of the world because I have never seen it before on this side, then I was like, yeah, let's get in. I had a good time in here, being as Romanian as possible and taking everything from here. Then I decided that it's time to fuck up this world and get rid of all this nonsense and boredom, so I spawned the wall of Mexico, oh uh, no, the wall of flesh. Yeah, I want to say that this boss offers a really cool and unforgettable experience while fighting it. You gotta dodge all of the lasers and the demon sides that he randomly spawns, as well as a bunch of hungries that- FUCK THIS! No! Yeah, so as I was saying, you have to dodge some lasers, some hungries, yeah, the regular Terraria experience that we all love, right? There we go lads, we entered the hard mode stage, the real part of the game. Until now, I was just playing in the playground, nothing important happened, you know. The first thing I did, as always, was to check the map and see this. Fuck you game. So we're exploding this and moving it to another place later. From the treasure bag I got a firecracker, which would have been truly amazing, but not this time lads. Since I got a warrior emblem, I went to the shimmer and turned it into a summoner emblem and that was it. I got in the underworld and started doing the dirty work, but in no time a corruption mimic attacked me and yeah, that was it. At home, I got all the materials needed and crafted the caustic stuff, but I still wanted more minions, so here we are in the underground ice biome. Been a while, hasn't it? I got in that open space where the bats played catch with me in the first day and almost died to an ice clasper that, when killed, it dropped the ice jump. With it, I could go to the spider nest found near the shimmer and just stay in a place while all the claspers do the hard work. Of course, we had to get a brand new armor set since the other one is kinda outdated, so here we are, lads, becoming Spider Man at home and also crafting the queen spider staff. The next task was to defeat the goblins again since in hard mode the goblin warlock dropped some cool stuff for the summoners. It was not the case during the first invasion so I decided to try again and after a few minutes and a green message letter I managed to get the first shadow flame which is a must have accessory as a summoner. A bit later I got the second one as well which will be needed later. Now you might be asking, who's gonna be the first boss to fall? 
Well, here I am lads, at the ocean, being ready for probably the hardest fight from this run. It's been a while since I have defeated this mini boss and it was a pleasure to kill it since it drops one of the best summon weapons that I can think of at this stage, that being the Sanguine stuff. So yeah, I continued gathering materials, this time from the hollow biome, but since I only had to get some souls and the gelatin crystal, this session ended sooner than expected. Time for the first hard mode boss has come, so enjoy the fight against the Queen Slime. Fuck! Wait, actually I did it. The boss died first, so that counts. The treasure bag gave only one out of the three items that I wanted, so I had to open more in order to get the blade staff and the gelatinous pillion as well. That was it before starting the final preparations for the next boss fight. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but it will not be Duke. Instead, I'm going for Anahita and the Leviathan, and why am I doing this? Well, one of the drops that we can get from this boss is a summoner weapon, and it's better than everything that I have at this point. Basically, I'm trying to get a better weapon and get past this part of the game with ease, but to do that, I have to survive this and honestly, this is not something that I'm good at. So I'll be doing Skeletron Prime instead and play the game without doing stone skipping. After killing the Prime Minister of the Mechanics, I decided to continue with the Twins, but I forgot the Gravitation Potion, so the next thing I knew was that I was dead. Now, enjoy the actual fight, or wait, is this the actual fight? Fuck you. This is the actual fight. Well, I have the perfect weapon already, so I will start the next fight without taking any breaks.
what the actual fuck was that? Let's see that again. Imagine if I didn't have the bats in this case, I would have died when the destroyer would have had like 2 or 3k HP left. The mechanical bosses have been defeated, but wait, we forgot something essential, and that was to get the mithril from the anvil. After crafting it, I was finally able to do all the crafting that every terrarian does after defeating the max. We got houses to build, mother of balloons to craft, harpies to kill, boots to upgrade, items to reforge and bosses to die to. At one point I managed to get to this part where the leviathan spawns and starts throwing swedish balls at me. However, the problems were caused by whatever the fuck those things are. Trust me, by the time of doing this I thought that defeating the leviathan before plantera would make me look like a total badass on the internet, that along with getting a really good summoner weapon. But guess what, none of these two are true. I am a noob that plays calamity mode and that summoner weapon is kinda trash, so instead we're doing the pirates for fun. It was kinda the same as the goblin army invasion, I didn't move a single block. Well yeah, until the ship came, but that was too easy to deal with. You know what was hard to deal with? This fat ass, useless, ugly and annoying fish. You know what terrarians, sometimes you just gotta play the game how it is supposed to be played. Defeat the mags, go to the jungle, dig a hell a big chunk, get some life roots, get close to dying from overdose, then get some extra stuff to get your HP bar to look sweetier. Then summon Plantera and yeah, enjoy. Except no, no no enjoy. As instead, as Waffle Time would say, we embark on an epic gamer mining session. The goal of this amazing mining station would be to expand this piece of trash that I called an arena and make some more space since the Plantera fight got crazier than it was before. Plantera has been defeated and a lot is happening. Firstly, I crafted the plantation staff, then I also crafted the seafood for the aquatic scourge, the cryo key for cryogen, the eye of desolation for the calamitas clone and the chaired idol for red cinderella. What the heck is little plantera doing lads? Well yeah, we're gonna test little plantera against one of calamity's most loved war bosses, the aquatic scourge. There we go, now we have to face the tier 2 acid rain and this time it is useful. It would be the crack Maumire, the enemy to be killed in order to get some crazy items such as the nuclear fuel rod. Then, since Plantera was defeated, I could get another brand new armor set, that being the Tiki Fortnite armor set. At this point I was just making side quests again, so here I am in the freezing cold, risking my smooth skin in the blizzard in order to kill the ice block from Minecraft.
Yeah, that was easy as expected. Now, did you miss going to the dungeon? Cause I did. You know, when it's holidays and you get all your relatives to give all kind of gifts to you? That's how I feel when I go to the hard mode dungeon and actually survive against all of these mentally ill enemies. It's 2am and I'm still writing the commentary for this, oh my god. Yeah, the next thing to do would be to take on the pumpkin moon event and gather as much spooky wood as possible while also trying to stay alive. At one point I killed one pumpkin and got a raven staff which was a nice summoner staff to have. The first pumpkin moon event ended and I still didn't get every item that was on my to be acquired list. I got the accessories but I still wanted some more wood. Look at this loadout guys, do you like it? Honestly, I don't. The only thing that can make it better would be to get the spooky armor set and there we go. Now we are not a Fortnite Stonehead fan anymore. After cancelling two blood moons it was the time to take on the Calamitas clone as well. With the Calamitas clone defeated, I consider this adventure halfway complete. Because of this, we will celebrate by crafting the status blessing and by mining some epic cryonic ore. Next up, I would craft a bunch of items that can get you rid of any debuff that might or might not annoy you in the morning and add them all together and finally get the Asgard's Valor, which is a must-have accessory for me. Blue 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 Among Us Creeper. Yes, blue 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 Among Us Creeper still had to defeat one more boss, so here we are, in the Brimstone Crag and I have no idea why it spawned on the right side. Did you notice that we are almost getting a golem and I am still using the slime puppet stuff? Yeah, that shit is pure fire, I told you. Alright, time for the next task, which is to go to the abyss and get some death cells from the locals that all they do is wander around and blue 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 every day not knowing that below them a godlike worm got called Jared on internet and was also bullied. I crafted a dreadmine stuff and at first I was like what does this even do? Then terrorism happened, so yeah, we are killing Stark Krablon now. Ostrom Orius has been defeated and that means one thing, it's time to say bye bye to the slime puppet stuff. We are replacing it with the Borealis Bomber, which kinda does the same shit anyways. Next I am finally going to defeat the Siren and the Chunky Fish, so I'll shut up again and yeah, see you after this is over.
Now, hear me out. By the time when I was recording this, I didn't know how bad the summoner weapon was yet, but I really wanted to get it. I opened the treasure bag and there it was. The gastric belcher stuff. Wait, does this mean that the Leviathan vomits from all the alcohol he drank yesterday? Anyways, I wanted to go to the hollowed biome to do some tasks, but on my way the hive mind spawned, so I had to get a little abominations to vomit on it. After that, I would get to the hollowed biome and summon the Empress of Light, which is a boss that I must defeat in this run at one point or another. This fight starts with me dodging everything like a pro gamer, then I kinda sucked, but I was still alive, then I got cut in pieces. <laughs> yeah, so how about I actually prepare for this fight? I wanted to do the Empress of Light during nighttime because from what I have played before you get the Terra Prisma if she dies during nighttime as well. The Empress of Light has been defeated and I was so happy about it. However, all the happiness would be gone when I put the treasure bag and see that there is a banned weapon and no Terra Prisma. Life can suck sometimes, but we gotta keep going, right? And keep going I did. I went to the jungle temple using a cool potion and here I am. After disarming every trap I was ready to summon Golem. As he spawned, seconds have passed and I have noticed that his hands are getting the HP lowered pretty fast. Damn, that was a close one. Fortunately, I did it first try, so yeah, here we go. What we're gonna do now is to turn into Blue Blue Creeper again and get some Scoria Ore from the deeper layers of the Abyss. Then go to the jungle and have the time of my life while scaring the hell out of the locals which are plagued. After that, I will craft the Wither Blossom stuff. Now, similar to the Voltaic Jelly, the Nuclear Fuel Rod and the first Shadow Flame, there is one more accessory to be acquired from the underground astral biome. It would be the Star Buster Core and look how many items I got, including a Hive Pod. It was the time to craft the Star Tainted Generator which does a lot of things. Basically, it was a great accessory to have. Then I will use the Star Buster Core as an extra accessory. Next up, I would also craft the Resurrection Butterfly and then go to the Hollowed Biome again, but do some side quests on my way such as defeating the Great Sand Shark and also Hogmine. I kept on collecting Lace Wings since I really wanted to defeat the Empress and get a Terra Prisma. As I got home, I have noticed that Desert Key in my inventory and that was nice to have since the Desert Tiger Staff is a summoner weapon. Unfortunately, that's not really the best tool in the shed, so I'll just display the weapon for the sake of it. Now, here we flip and go. It's time for the daytime Empress of Light fight.
Okay, damn, those be hitting hard. I was like, yeah, I should get a specific item. I get a specific item I did, that being the Rod of Discord. Then I wanted another sentry, so here goes another fight. This time against Rock and Flesh Crabalon, the boss that I hate the most and hope that it will not exist in the near future anymore. That was yet another close fight. I would have been so annoyed if I got stuck at this boss. Unfortunately, I didn't get the spike crack stuff on my first try, so I had to buy more treasure bags and there it was. Unfortunately, that didn't help much since I was on the run most of the time, so I guess I needed a new minion. Well, I had an idea and that implied defeating the Martian invasion. The Martian saucer dropped the Xeno stuff and that was exactly what I wanted. Unfortunately, again, I died against the Empress again and again, then I tried to defeat the Flavoringer Goliath but died to it as well, but this was far better than the Empress, so yeah, I guess that I will defeat the Covid terrorist Queen Bee. This boss fight was a must in my run since I was a summoner and the Plaguebringer Goliath dropped some materials that are used in order to craft the Plaguebringer armor, which is for summoners. What does it do? Well, besides other bonuses, it spawns a mini Plaguebringer to help me and it's kinda cute. Yippity yippity ho, we are going to war, to the dungeon! Yeah, the cultist was easy peasy, no problems at all, but now I had to deal with the pillars, which in Calamity are not that hard, so yeah, we're still fine. Now what the fuck am I doing in here? Oh, this is the place where I belong. After the Stardust Pillar was taken down, I collected the Stardust Fragments and got home so I could craft the Status Curse, then stack it with the Status Blessing and also craft the Stardust Dragon Staff. With it, I will take on another beloved war boss from Calamity Mode, that being out from Dios, which I might or might not cheese, so yeah, enjoy.
Well, yet another close fight, but I really enjoyed it. The dragon did a great job. I went to get the god spawn helix staff, but I wasn't that lucky, so I repeated it again, but still didn't get it. Then I tried once again and died like the dumb idiot that I am. That kind of hurt. Anyways, I bought the treasure bag and got it. So here we are now, taking on the vortex pillar, then failing against the empress once again, then taking on the last pillar that has to be defeated, that being the solar pillar, which I almost now hit him. Well, the time has come. It is the iconic moment that you have been waiting for. Final boss of Terraria, the Moon Lord. Let's see how this one goes. With Moon Lord shaking, I knew that 67% of this run was over. I was getting closer and closer to the final bosses, the true dons of Calamity, the ones that can get your hair white by the time you get 20 years old. There we go, the messages that I wanted to see. I opened the treasure bag and got surprised by the rainbow crystal staff since that was such a great century to have. The first thing I did was to go to the outer space and gather a lot of Luminite and Exodium cluster and then grab the entire Stardust armor set as well as the Celestial Tracers and a Celestial Shell since I had a free accessory slot. Also crafted a normality relocator since I didn't want to switch between the weapon and the rod of discord every time and that makes me realize how much of an idiot I am since I am playing with the summoner class and I can just stay with the rod in my hands the entire time since the minions will do the work for me anyways. Anything else? Well the flowers of mortality and that's seeing that I need the terror prisma for the elemental axe. Well, that kinda sucks. So guess what I'm doing now? Dying to the Empress again and again. I am done. There was one more weapon that I haven't checked yet, that being the Tactical Plague Engine, which sounds complex, but here's the catch. For it to work, you have to use bullets. I tried the Empress once again and I was getting kinda far, but still gave up eventually and decided to attempt Dragonfall instead. Yeah, it was always like this, the Dragon Folly was always an easy boss, probably the easiest out of all post Moon Lord bosses. Also got the third rage upgrade, so that was great. Now it's time for a mining session again. Brrr. Yeah, after a few minutes it was over, so let's see how I do against the Profane Guardians, or the Guardian Commander, excuse me please. Yeah, that was fairly easy, but I still don't like this boss either. Now, oh boy, I couldn't believe my eyes. I died like an idiot to Providence and the reason I say that is because lately, when I played regular Calamity and not Infernum, I managed to defeat Providence on my first attempt. Well, this is the second attempt, so here we go.
What's fun is that by the time of editing this, one month since it has been recording has it passed, so I don't remember exactly why I said fuck you back there. Well, if I said that back then, all I can say now is fuck you. I went to the dungeon to get some phantoplasm, but since I wasn't really the one to control who's dying and my minions were on a rampage, I got to see Poltergeist spawn from natural causes, and what was funny was the fact that I actually tried to dodge and fight it, but after getting hit once, I called it a day and recalled. So I guess now we are doing stuff that was actually supposed to be done before the dungeon thingy. Here's me crafting some stuff such as the Vivid Vanguard, the Elderberry and the entire Tarragon set. After that, I took on Providence once more, but this time in the Hallowed Biome and got the Elysian Wings from her. What came next was me going on a rampage against every boss, starting with the Stormweaver, then moving on to Cygnus. Fuck! Repeating the process and unleashing hell on this boss, then trying the Empress once again and getting a new record. It was going down for sure, so the next clip is me fighting it again. There will be no commentary, so enjoy. Finally, the Empress of Light has been defeated during daytime as well, so that means I get a Terra Prisma. I open the treasure bag and this game fucks with me so bad. Well, I'll put the second Terra Prisma in here. Finally, I could craft the Elemental Axe, but at what use? I guess I'll just keep it for later. Now I have to continue my rampage, so we go straight into the dungeon. I wanted to check the room generated by Calamity Mode since you guys suggested that I should not make an arena, but use the one generated by the game. I went down and found a room full of water from the Abyss, and that reminds me of the sewers from Outlast when you have to escape from Chris Walker in a room full of water. Well, I guess I will do the hard work, so here I am draining the room, then expanding it since 30% of it, if not more, is covered by the voice dog. I tried defeating the Ceaseless Void but had no success, so I decided to make my own arena somewhere more close to the entrance and not close to the abyss walls. After some minutes, it was done, so I spawned some portals with a portal gun and summoned Poltergeist, which will be the next boss to be defeated.
It was great to defeat Poltergeist on my first attempt, not gonna lie. I was really lucky to get the Ethereal Subjugator from the first bag as well. It was the time to craft a brand new armor set, so Bloodflare set it is. I also crafted Sirius, a weapon that used to obliterate the Devourer of Gods back in the old good days, and also crafted the Phantomic Artifact, which was the final upgrade for the Spirit Glyph. I didn't really want to attempt Seasless Void again since I kinda hate it on regular Calamity, so I decided to start a side quest and take on the Tier 3 Acid Brain event. After a few minutes and a lot of projectiles eaten, a tornado appeared, so that meant only one thing. It was Joe Biden Duke the one to kill me next, but before that will happen, I would like to mention that this fight was going all good until this happened. You know what I haven't checked on a while? The Abyss Brothers and Sisters, the place where all the problems can be resolved with only one left click with the wrong item in my hands. Oh god, I love fighting three mini bosses at the same time. Unfortunately, that first squid didn't give the calamari thingy, so I had to kill another one in order to get it. With it, I finally took on Sisless Void and used the cheap portal gun strategy. I hope they won't nerf it. I have been using this for almost four years. In a few seconds, Sisless Void has been killed as well. Who's next, Joe Biden fish run? Not gonna lie, but I started to like this fight more and more. I opened the bag and there it was, probably the last entry to be acquired in this run. Now there was one major problem. Everything that has to be done, has been done, so that means I must defeat this piece of absolute trash. You can go fuck yourself and never return. Yeah, hey Phantasm here, I wanted to say that the entire 2 hours clip where I constantly fail against this piece of absolute useless garbage has been probably eaten by it, so I cannot show you a montage where I constantly fail. But worry not, the Infernum series is returning, so for those who have been watching my streams, you know exactly what's gonna happen. So stay tuned for that and also enjoy the second phase for this boss fight.
Yes, oh my god, fuck you, it's over. The dog shit has been defeated. Calamity devs, if you're watching this, fix those laser barrages for fuck's sake. Well, hello, Phantasm here again. We fucking did it. So yeah, we craft a brand new anvil, then we redo the beloved pumpkin moon, then we take for the first time on the solar eclipse, and then try to stop terrorism from destroying our beloved Christmas. Also, since Christmas is coming soon, shall I do a Christmas special video with another YouTuber? Please let me know in the comments or on Discord or both. Well, those are all the preparations. Look at that spicy hotbar and the new loadout that I have. I love it. It's time to move on to the next boss, which is my favorite. It's Yaron. How can you not love this boss when he charges into you in the very first second of the fight? The fight continues with me constantly no hitting it, then as I get closer and closer to defending it, I start making crucial mistakes such as this one that got me from full HP to 1 HP. As he gets to 1%, all I do is dodge his charge and tie to a fireball. Yeah to a fireball. The good part about this is that I love the boss fight and also that I'm doing it in this attempt. So enjoy this fight as well as the tune. Yo, that was insanely close, but here we go Terraria fans, we did it, we have two more bosses left. How about the treasure bag and was so happy to see the Yaron Kindle stuff in my inventory, as well as Drew's wings. We embark on probably the last epic mining session from this series as we still have to get the Auric War, which is used to craft a shit ton of Auric Tesla bars, which again are used to craft Seraph tracers and the Auric Tesla armor pieces. Before summoning the next boss, I had to do the entire process with the schematics, which was more like just waiting and clicking a few times. It was all coming together. So I started expanding the arena since this boss fight is going to be wild. Well, how wild? This wild. Fortunately, this took less than 5 attempts if I'm not wrong and that's because I am the epic Terraria Calamity player that slays bosses without getting annoyed at all.
Now, this guy is speaking fact, but as always, I chose to ignore him because I want to get over with this as fast as possible. Not gonna lie, this is the free space left on my laptop after recording the entire movie. We are epic gamers. I opened the loot box and got a lot of stuff, but the most impressive thing was this. A box that spawned a turret and left sounds like future America to me, but that was not it. What I could do was to pick up the weapon and have the time of my life with it. I also managed to craft the miracle matter and with it I got my hands on the cosmic immaterializer, which is a crazy fidget spinner. Well, I placed a campfire, a heart statue and a star in a bottle and that was it. It was the time for the final showdown and honestly, no matter how climatic I wanted this to be, you will probably get disappointed since this is the first and only attempt against this boss. So yeah. Enjoy this last fight against the Supreme Witch Calamitas. You have no idea how bad I feel for not using a DPS meter at all. I would have loved to see the DPS against this boss. I bet it was just insane. Anyways, there it is, the witch crying because I beat her in her own game. Don't worry, I will give you money for enchantments later, bitch. And give her money I did, turning the staff of Macworm into the metastasis, which is, you know, probably one of the worst weapons when it comes to how the minion looks. This is so disturbing, what the fuck. Whoever created the design for this, please go and create the design for other horror games as well. Anyways, there was one last thing that I wanted to do before ending this, and it's not checking Jared. I wanted to become the sun, and I felt that the Profane Soul Crystal would transform you into Providence or something like that, but unfortunately for me, all it did was to add some more rocks and yeah, probably I have enough energy or stuff like that, but anyways, that was kinda it.
I am sorry for the anticlimactic ending, but those fights were too easy. So yeah, this was the pure summoner experience from Calamity Mode. No whips or classless weapons used, just pure slavery. Oh, whoops, that was not the right word. What I wanted to say is that the minions did such a great job and yeah, thanks for watching this movie so far. Stay tuned for more, cause I'm not done with this trend yet. See you in the next one. Peace.